The life for children with rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease who have no access to primary health care is dire. We want to make sure people are aware that it's just a simple sore throat that can lead to a damaged heart. Here's one that's actually preventable, and it's preventable at an early age in an extremely cost-effective and very simple manner. And now we have the political mandate to end rheumatic heart disease in Africa. The road to Addis is about the political mandate from the heads of state of African countries to stop rheumatic heart disease. It is a remarkable moment which is based on an expert committee that was assembled by the Africa Union Commission to determine the roadmap or the steps that are required to end rheumatic heart disease. It's really been the result of many years of work, which has shown the, the sort of seven key things that we require, um, sort of key indicators to say this is where we can actually move the rheumatic heart disease agenda forward. Um, five of them sort of speak to critical interventions in terms of medical and surgical interventions, and then two speak very clearly to the fact and the need for collabor collaboration around um, a, a disease process like rheumatic heart disease. So the first is speaking about sentinel sites and having key data sets. And if we don't know what's happening in a disease, we can't deal with it. Simply put, everybody with rheumatic heart disease on the African continent needs to be put on a register so that we know the size of the problem and we can track the problem. The idea is that to develop um, key demonstration sites and then key databases within those um, that we can use to answer the kind of questions that is required um, to be able to deal with the disease. Once you measure something, you need a tool by which to stop it. And that tool is a drug called penicillin. Every child that presents with a sore throat deemed to be streptococcus, they are given penicillin injection. If you use it to treat sore throat in children, you reduce the chances of rheumatic fever by over 80%. It's clear from the answers already that penicillin has a role in primary prevention, a key role in secondary prevention, and even after a tertiary intervention such as surgery, we need to continue with penicillin. So the second step that is required is for governments to make sure penicillin is available in their countries, in their health systems, because penicillin is as powerful as a vaccine in preventing rheumatic heart disease. We're dealing with the fact that there's a national and even multinational shortage of penicillin, um, which is a public health crisis, to be quite honest. The third step in this road to end rheumatic heart disease in Africa is related to the people who are most affected. It is in fact a disease of young women who are affected with this particular condition and we are putting a spotlight on these young women because they need to be provided with reproductive health services. Young women, women during pregnancy are specifically at risk of developing the mortality and morbidity around rheumatic heart disease. On reproductive health services, we want to embark on antenatal screening. The reason for that being that if you fall pregnant with bad rheumatic heart disease, you may lose your life, which means that pregnancy in the context of rheumatic heart disease needs to be planned through proper family planning and so on. And we already know that's not happening very well. The fourth step on the road to Addis is referring to the need for expertise. By that we mean uh, both trained nurses, trained doctors with equipment, with appropriate equipment 
to be made available at the primary healthcare level. If we can't have facilities in all the centers, let's develop regional centers. And that is what we are trying to advocate. The tests now, such as ultrasound, can be made available at the primary care level. They're the size of a laptop now. So we need to devolve and, um, and share tasks so that we can cover all the bases. So we can't only have something like echocardiography, which is very important for decision making, for deciding um, what the lesion is, for making a diagnosis, only in the hands of such incredible subspecialists. We need to devolve all those um, and, and use other cadres of health workers to perform the needs that is required. So what we need is identify people to go to train. Training does not only mean that people have to go out, let them go out, but when they come back they should be supported with further training. Even those who are half trained locally, they can learn slowly within their own country through mentorship visits by those people who know. The kinds of things that we're talking about are echocardiography in the hands of lesser or differently trained health professionals, INR, which is a way of measuring blood thinning, that that doesn't only happen in a lab, that we can use point-of-care methods. Um, penicillin doesn't have to be given in a hospital by a doctor after the first um, shot. It can be given by a nurse or even a community health worker, or even a parent. Um, so we need to build those in innovative methods of getting um, treatment and, and prevention out there. So this whole issue of strengthening and improving primary health care, making uh, well-trained health professionals available, making diagnostic tests available is going to be key. The fifth element in the uh, road to Addis refers to the need for centres that can perform surgery as well as research and training on the problem of rheumatic heart valve disease. We often shy away from the concept of surgery in developing countries. We see it as the pinnacle of, um, of medicine, far too expensive. That in itself deprives you of development. That's why we want these surgeries to be happening in our countries. Let's have skills transfer so that we embark on this. Let us advocate to our government so that these facilities are established. Number six uh, rela relates to the need for ministries of health to have national rheumatic fever committees that monitor and that drive the whole program for ending rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease in their countries. We've recognized that the Minister of Health should play the biggest role. Then other organizations, like projects like ours, should be there to advocate. We are not proposing a new standalone program, but we're proposing the strengthening of existing systems. But ultimately, the government should take role. All of this is going to require resources, and those resources are going to have to come from Africa, they're going to come from outside Africa, which is why collaboration with global groups that are working in this area is going to be critical. We need to have multi-sectoral partnerships um, that we used to, should use all the levels of healthcare, from the government to the members of finance to the housing, to get them all together to be talking about it. And we need to bring all of those groups together to assist in this campaign to make rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease history on the African continent. This is um, the start of a really exciting phase with the African Union Communique, with bringing the message out there on a wider front, um, and that we are very convinced that this is um, something really worth um, achieving. When somebody is beating a drum, you don't know how far the sound travels. And this is the drum we are beating for rheumatic heart disease. And we know it has gone far. And if this drum continues beating, we are going to realize our concept of eliminating rheumatic heart disease in our lifetime. For Africa, this is a significant moment where we have a political mandate to end rheumatic heart disease.